The movie begins by telling a story of ancient times when humans and dragons lived side by side. However, over time, humans began to be greedy and ambitious to rule the world. Dragons then begged humans to stop their actions. But instead of listening to the dragon's request, humans declared war on them. And then there was this evil scientist named Petrucius who created a dragon-killing monster called Nettlebrand. However, Petrucius could not control his nightmare, and he was eaten by the monster of his creation. From then on, Nettlebrand began to lose control and hunt dragons all over the world. The dragons could not defeat Nettlebrand. They all split up to save themselves. Then Nettlebrand returned home and lived in his creator's castle while waiting for his next prey to appear. Centuries had passed, and as human civilization advanced, now humans had forgotten about dragons. While the remaining dragons chose to hide and kept their existence hidden from the outside world. In a hidden valley, it was shown that the dragons lived peacefully and safely. In that place, there was a silver dragon named Firedrake, often bullied by other dragons because of his introverted nature. Firedrake became quiet and a loner because he could not burst fire like the other dragons. Therefore, the only friend of Firedrake who always accompanied him everywhere was Sorrel, a ferret. In addition, Firedrake was also friends with an old dragon, Slatebeard. One day, Slatebeard recounted a wonderful place called the Rim of Heaven, which used to be the home of dragons, but it was very far away and on the other side. Firedrake, who listened to him, was curious about the place. Then Firedrake told the story of the Rim of Heaven to Sorrel and intended to find it. But suddenly, there was an explosion. They both checked the origin of the sound, and it turned out that humans were opening a mining field not far from the Valley of the Dragons. Firedrake and Sorrel instantly reported it to the adult dragons and made them panic. A red dragon tried to provoke other dragons to attack humans but the dragon leader held them. He asked them to wait until the full moon arrived. While waiting, they would hide where they had been prepared before. During the panic, Firedrake recalled the rim of heaven told by Slatebeard earlier. Therefore, Firedrake asked Sorrel to find the valley together. But Sorrel rejected it because it was hazardous if they flew out of the valley. Moreover, they needed to find out the location of the rim of heaven. After that, Sorrel went home to prepare groceries while in hiding. Sorrel and the other ferrets looked very hateful to humans because humans were very greedy and wanted to control everything. At night, Firedrake could not sleep because he kept thinking of the Rim of Heaven. As all the adult dragons fell asleep, Firedrake secretly slipped out to look for the place. But when he was about to fly, Sorrel suddenly appeared and wanted to go with him. The two of them quickly left together. But as it turned out, this was the first time Firedrake flew. Despite the difficulty of flying, in the end, he was able to master it and fly smoothly. After flying long enough, the two saw the city inhabited by humans. Firedrake was fascinated by the beauty of the city's lights at night. But they needed clarification about where to go. Sorrel then remembered her friend's words. There was someone who could answer all the questions, and the person was called the Internet. So, they both decided to go to the city first. Meanwhile, a boy named Ben was found stealing a diamond necklace in the middle of town. He was pursued by the shop owner as well as the police. Ben then used the crowd who wanted to watch how to train your dragon to avoid the shop owner's chase. On the other hand, Firedrake and Sorrel landed on top of a warehouse by the docks. Firedrake then went into the barn to hide, while Sorrel went to the city to search the internet. Firedrake saw a bedroom inside the shed and found a How to Train Your Dragon movie poster stuck to the wall. Shortly after, Ben, who managed to escape, returned to his house. He was shocked to see Firedrake, who was in his place. Ben thought that Firedrake was the one wearing the dragon costume. But after making sure that Firedrake turned out to be a real dragon, Ben became frightened, especially when he found out that Firedrake could talk. On the other hand, Firedrake, who saw Ben's performance, thought he was to be the man on the How to Train Your Dragon poster or the Dragon Rider. Hearing that, Ben pretended to confirm it and Firedrake easily believed in him. Even Ben said that he could help him find the Rim of Heaven. Then innocently Firedrake invited Ben to go with him. However, Sorrel, who suddenly turned up, quickly rejected the idea because she thought humans could not be trusted. Shortly afterward, the cops started coming to the barn to arrest Ben. He had no choice but to say he could help Firedrake and Sorrel find the Rim of Heaven. The three of them got out of that place. Everyone was stunned to see a dragon flying over them. On the way, Ben told Firedrake where they were going. Firedrake replied that they were going to the end of the world. Ben was speechless to hear that and asked Firedrake to lower him by making excuses. Then they all went down into a forest, but Ben went straight away, leaving them there. A short time later, three dwarves appeared, and they were fascinated to see Firedrake, a very rare silver dragon. After one of the dwarves left, Firedrake asked them the location of the Rim of Heaven. But the dwarves did not know about the place and only learned about its legend. It was said that silver would be more valuable than gold if the Rim of Heaven was found. Listening to their conversation, Ben was simply tempted to see the Rim of Heaven. After the dwarves left, Ben returned to Firedrake and Sorrel to lead them to the Rim of Heaven. 
but Sorrel wanted to avoid Ben on their trip because she thought he had other intentions. While fighting, Firedrake accidentally saw a castle on a mountain slope not far from where they were. On the other hand, one of the dwarves who had left earlier was heading to the castle. It was the residence of Nettlebrand who lived with his assistant Twigleg. Shortly after, the dwarf reached the palace and informed Nettlebrand of Firedrake. The dwarf even said that Firedrake was not an ordinary dragon but a very rare silver dragon. Nettlebrand was surprised because he had not seen the dragon for a long time. His passion for hunting the dragons rose again, because Nettlebrand wanted so much to prey on the dragon. He then asked the dwarf to take him to Firedrake. Meanwhile, Firedrake, Sorrel, and Ben felt something was wrong as the ground began to tremble. The three of them hurried away from the place. Nettlebrand, who saw them run away, was very angry. He then ordered Twigleg to follow them on a crow. On the other hand, the dragons noticed the disappearance of Firedrake and Sorrel, and they searched for them. Firedrake and the others were caught in a sandstorm in the middle of the journey. Therefore, the three of them were stranded in a desert. Sorrel and Ben separated from Firedrake. They walked across the desert to find a way out, but they accidentally discovered the ruins of the old town. The two of them then entered, and it turned out that the wreckage was where Firedrake fell. Sorrel approached Firedrake, who fell unconscious. Shortly after, a monster appeared and attacked them. Ben then told Firedrake to spout fire from his mouth, but Sorrel told Ben that Firedrake could not spout fire. Ben then became panicked, and the case happened. It was good that they all survived when a kind-hearted man showed up to help them. The man then showed the monster a mirror which kept it silent and motionless. The man introduced himself as Professor Barnabas and he was a researcher and archaeologist. At the same time, the professor was amazed to see the shape of Firedrake for the first time. After getting acquainted, Professor Barnabas took them all to his camp. From a distance, there was a twigleg who was still following them. Shortly after, they reached Barnabas' tent. While resting, Ben told Barnabas many things. He also said to him that they would find the Rim of Heaven. Having heard that, Barnabas said he had a friend named Sabisha Gulab who knew about the dragons very well. Barnabas also showed the location of the Genie of a Thousand Eyes, which could help them locate the site of the Rim of Heaven. On the other hand, Twigleg, who was eavesdropping on their conversation, contacted Nettlebrand to notify the next Firedrake destination. After learning that, Nettlebrand prepared to catch up with them using his submarine. By the time everyone was asleep, Barnabas, who was checking on the monster, found a torn newspaper article that showed information about Ben's accident a few years ago. The accident killed both of Ben's parents. The following day, Ben and his friends were getting ready to leave. But before that, Barnabas returned the newspaper article he found to Ben. He asked Ben to forget the past. He offered Ben a job and gave him his business card. After that, they separated, and Ben continued his journey with Firedrake and Sorrel. Shortly after, they finally arrived in a valley where the genie lived but found nothing. Instead of meeting the genie, they found an old car that was very strange because it was in that place. Ben then got into the car and idly pressed the horn button. Suddenly, something happened. The vehicle began to vibrate, and pink smoke appeared from the car's exhaust which turned out to be the genie. Ben asked the genie about the location of the Rim of Heaven. The genie then gave Ben a vision of the site of the place. But the genie did not let them go and started attacking them. At the same time, Nettlebrand arrived at the spot and immediately attacked the genie. While they were fighting, Firedrake and the others took advantage of the moment to escape. Meanwhile, at the Valley of the Dragons, they were anxious. The construction of the mine was getting closer to where they lived. In addition, they were also trying to locate Firedrake and Sorrel who had been missing for several days. The scene then moves on to Ben and his friends. Armed with a map of the professor, they finally reached an island in India. It was the home of Sabisha Gulab, a friend of the professor. The people welcomed Firedrake's arrival, especially when they found out that Ben was a dragon rider, and everyone there cheered happily. They then took Ben and the others to meet with Sabisha Gulab. After meeting with Sabisha, Ben told her where they were going. Hearing that, Sabisha took them to a temple, the final resting place of Varan who was the only dragon rider that had ever existed before Ben appeared. Sabisha also told the story of dragons in ancient times. But at the same time, Ben felt something in his bag, and it turned out that Twigleg had been following them since he split up with Professor Barnabas. Sorrel quickly caught him trying to escape. Twigleg, who had been caught, told them he was a spy sent by Nettlebrand. But when he explained everything, he suddenly got a video call from Nettlebrand. Sorrel then ordered Twigleg to direct Nettlebrand to a place far away from them. At first, everything was under control when Twigleg said he was in the rim of heaven at the North Pole. But it did not last long. Sabisha's servant accidentally dropped a bowl of hot soup on Twigleg for tripping over a fire rake's tail. That then got Twigleg's phone down and the camera pointed right at them. Nettlebrand then found out that they were actually in India. Sabisha then marked a map after seeing the vision given by the genie while reminding them not to lose it. But Nettlebrand's raven took the map from Sabisha's hand. They had no choice nor should they leave without the map. 
Before leaving, Sabisha convinced Ben that he was a dragon rider. She also said that Ben could guide them by following his heart. After that, the residents gave a shirt to Ben and they parted ways. Thanks to the vision given by the genie, the three of them almost reached the hill. But on the other hand, Nettlebrand also managed to catch up with them, and the chase broke out. Nettlebrand savagely hit all the cave walls. Fortunately, they managed to escape and reach the door of the Rim of Heaven. However, it turns out that there was nothing but statues and paintings of dragons. It made Ben very disappointed. He then asked Firedrake and Sorrel to leave the place immediately because Nettlebrand would soon get there. But Firedrake and Sorrel refused to go and decided to stay in the area. Ben, who disagreed with them, chose to go on his own. On the way, Ben saw Nettlebrand headed for the cave. Ben then found the gold scale that fell from Nettlebrand's body, and when he saw it, he realized something. Meanwhile, Nettlebrand, who had arrived in the cave, faced Firedrake directly. But Firedrake, who had no fighting power and experience, could only keep evading. Soon after, Ben got to the cave and met up with Sorrel. He reminded them of the prophecy that Sabisha said about silver would be worth more than gold in the rim of heaven. He noted that Firedrake could beat Nettlebrand made of gold. But those words did not impact Firedrake because he did not understand what Ben meant. Nettlebrand even managed to catch them. As an appetizer, he intended to eat Ben. Firedrake, who saw it, began to experience changes. He suddenly lost consciousness and his body became bubbling like a fish. Nettlebrand was surprised to see the difference in Firedrake's body. Firedrake suddenly sprang a blue flame from his mouth towards Nettlebrand, which kept Ben safe. With his burst of blue fire, Firedrake managed to melt Nettlebrand and turn it into gold grains. After that, Sorrel found a puzzle key that matched the puzzle on the cave wall. Sorrel then attached the puzzle to the wall of the cave. Slowly the cave wall began to open and behind it was another beautiful world. It was the real rim of heaven, and they were amazed to see it. Sometime later, the dragons were getting ready to attack humans. But their plans came to a halt after seeing the arrival of Firedrake and Sorrel. Firedrake then told them that he had found the rim of heaven. As proof, they showed the flowers that came from the place. Firedrake then led them to the rim of heaven. In the meantime, Ben decided to stay with Barnabas and help with his research. Ben returned the jewelry he stole earlier to the shop owner. He even added gold scales from Nettlebrand's body to him. The movie ends by showing Ben and Firedrake's farewell to a happy ending. Ben got a new family, while Firedrake and his flock got a new safe and beautiful place to live. The moral that can be learned from this movie is about selfless kindness. Like the professor who saved Ben and the others from being attacked by monsters in the desert, then gave them clues to find the rim of heaven and even accepted Ben as his new family.